welcome back to another week's video. This week, the idea is very simple. I want to give a little bit of a behind the scenes look, a little bit of extra information around the cows methane being fake emissions video, which I posted on TikTok during the week. I posted that video on Tuesday, today is Friday, and across a various number of accounts and a various number of platforms, it has well over 1 million views. If you've seen the end of last week's video, I mentioned that I wanted to try to reach the public with my social media videos more and not just focus on farmers. <laughs> and that was sort of my attempt to reach a wider audience. The way I done the video was slightly different. Um, I let anyone who wanted share it and post it on their platform and it worked much better than I ever could have expected. So this morning on the farm, I have had everything fed. There was two calves tagged and moved. We sent four cows, four cows to the factory. I checked my breeding list and moved some cows between batches because they're now eligible for service and checked for heats and AI two cows. And that takes us to here, which is now 11 o'clock. And we have totally ran out of slurry storage. Do you remember two weeks ago, I posted a video of us doing slurry and I said that will buy us two weeks. Well, it's now two weeks and it has done nothing but rain. So we have to get some more slurry out today. So annoying and so stupid that there was two dry weeks in January and we weren't allowed to spread. And I say this every year, I should have just spread slurry in January. This idea of waiting because of a slurry ban is just so unbelievably dumb. And it's fine if February's dry, but if February's wet, it just becomes an absolute nightmare. Something needs to happen around that too, but that's a video for another day. We're gonna focus on my climate methane video for today. If you haven't seen it, I'm gonna stick it up now. You can watch it, it's three minutes long. If you have seen it, skip ahead three minutes. And I'm also gonna post the video as a YouTube short on my own account. It is on like Gareth Wynne Jones' account. It's on a couple of accounts on Twitter that I've seen. It's probably on way more accounts than I realize, but I'm gonna post it on my account as a short as well. So if you want to share it with anyone, it'll be there. The biggest lie in the world right now is that cows are killing the planet. At the core of that lie is how methane is calculated. And in the next few minutes, I am going to take you through the full carbon cycle for my dairy cows from the air and back to the air. All the carbon that enters my dairy cows starts in the air. And I have organized this fog as a nice visual representation of that carbon. Let's take 10 carbon atoms from the air and follow their journey through one of my dairy cows. The grass in my field uses photosynthesis. That's a hard word to say. Photosynthesis. Grass uses photosynthesis to pull carbon out of the air and store it as energy in the form of carbohydrates and proteins. So when my cows come in here in a few weeks to graze this field, they will eat the grass and they will take up the carbon. Sorry if I'm explaining this like you're stupid, but none of the public question any of this stuff. One of the 10 carbon atoms will leave as meat and milk, which is then consumed as food by us humans, and we emit the carbon as respiration. Another two of the carbon atoms are emitted as respiration by the cow, also not counted as an emission. The remaining seven carbon atoms are digested in the rumen of the cow by bacteria. The bacteria inside the cow's rumen takes the remaining seven carbon atoms and converts them to methane through the bacteria's version of respiration. So respiration from the human, not counted as an emission. Respiration from the cow, not counted as an emission. Respiration from the rumen, counted as an emission. But here's the thing, no matter how the carbon leaves the cow, it has all started in the same place, which is the air. This next bit is where climate scientists like to gaslight us farmers and say that methane is not the same as CO2. So let's continue to track our seven carbon atoms which have left our cow as methane. They have entered the atmosphere again and them seven methane atoms have 96 times the global warming potential of seven carbon atoms. However, over the next 12 years, them seven methane molecules that entered the atmosphere will break down into CO2 and water, completing our cycle. 
What this means is if you have a stable number of animals like this farm has for the last 12 years, as you emit the seven methane molecules, seven more that you emitted a decade earlier have just broken down back to carbon to be reabsorbed by the grass. So the net effect of the methane molecules emitted by my cows on global warming is zero. Factually, zero. And yet, in all the carbon calculations, them methane molecules are accounting for over 70% of my farm's emissions. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Write down the tag number on your tiger. Have to be milked for basins. It's always very hard to get slurry done in February as well because we calve really heavily in February. In January, we maybe have 10 cows calving. February, 70 cows. It's like, why do we do this to ourselves for a stupid, pointless date which someone in an office made up? Oh, anyway, this video was not meant to be a rant about the story band. <laughs> it was meant to be about carbon and my viral video. Sorry for the steering wheel in your road, but my camera mount is in the JCB and I can't be bothered going to get it. So let me give you a little bit of my background in carbon calculations, especially from dairy cows. When I was at university, the kind of nerdy sciencey stuff around carbon, nutrition, the stuff which most farmers hate, I loved. So when it came to picking a dissertation topic, I actively wanted something which involved spreadsheets and calculations. That is how I ended up doing my dissertation on carbon calculations, carbon emissions from dairy cows. I had two supervisors who guided me through my dissertation project, both from Queen's University, both climate scientists, and I took a lot of my knowledge, a lot of my guidance from them. So I never questioned it when they told me that methane was 27 times more polluting than CO2, and I just accepted that 70% of my dairy cows emissions were coming from methane and that my dairy cows were really, really bad for the planet. In fact, I remember sitting in an initial meeting with my two supervisors and them heavily pushing me down the route of using tier three or scope three emissions, which makes dairy cow emissions several times worse than they actually are. It wasn't until six or seven years later that I started noticing that different people used different values for how much more polluting methane was than CO2. So I decided to go away and Google it and try to understand why some people said methane was 24 times more polluting, some said 27, some said 35, some said 86, some said 98, some said 112, you get the idea. And when I started Googling the answer, I opened a can of worms and an absolute rabbit hole. That was the first time that I realised that methane was a short-lived greenhouse gas and only survived in the atmosphere for 12 years. And when I found out that methane was short-lived, that my cows were essentially contributing nothing to global warming through their methane, I had serious doubts that I was right and I went out of my way to ask people about this and to find someone who could explain to me why I was wrong. So when no one could disprove what I was saying, and in fact, most people I asked said, yeah, no, that's right, yeah, that's GWP star versus GWP 100. My mind was blown. And maybe that's a reaction that some of you have had from watching that video. So then I started asking the question, why is it calculated like this? Why is everyone deliberately misleading farmers? And the answer is actually very simple and very predictable, and that is, the oil and gas industry, the ones with the billions of pounds that basically sponsor world governments, 
they are using agriculture, biomethane from cows, to buy them longer so they can emit more carbon from under the ground into the air without warming the planet. Paris Climate Change Agreement, it blatantly states this. If animal numbers can be cut, methane can be reduced, society can emit carbon for longer. That is why this is happening, but no one wants to tell farmers. The global media propaganda machine backed by billions of pounds from the oil and gas companies has been at work now for years to convince the public that my cows are actually responsible for global warming and not the companies digging carbon up from under the ground. So that takes us up till about 18 months ago. And one of my favorite YouTube channels, a channel called Kerningzig, done a video on how methane from ruminant animals is killing the planet. This is a channel which gets tens of millions of views on their videos, has a huge influential impact on young people who are watching it, and they totally ignored the science that by this point I knew was true. I have vowed to never ever watch that channel again and I have stuck to it. I am doing a one-man boycott. <laughs> but it just illustrated to me the power of the forces that agriculture is facing. And so we finally end up in present day. I've made a few videos now trying to highlight how unfairly methane is calculated. There's a video here on YouTube called Why My Cows Are Not Killing the Planet. There's another video about emissions from beef cattle. There is a video about a stick which went semi-viral, probably like half a million people seen it, about how carbon calculations and how methane is treated is so unfair in agriculture. There was another, another two videos I posted recently in a series called Climate Dismiss Information and the methane video, which I released on Tuesday, was meant to be the final part of that series. And this is where we get into like the behind the scenes of posting videos on social media a bit. So the previous two videos were me standing in front of a whiteboard. And the idea of the video was to use the whiteboard to illustrate what I was saying clear. However, the problem was no one wants to watch a video of someone standing in front of a whiteboard. So I had lost the audience before it got interesting enough to keep them. Also, having to explain that this is a series and it's called Climate Dismissive Information and all that, it didn't add to the video, it just lost people's attention. So for the third and final installment, the one that mattered, the one that was about methane, I had to do something different and I decided to go with a formula that works, which is be in an interesting environment while I'm doing the video and start it with a really attention-grabbing statement. We are traveling much better on this field than I had expected. Okay, it's, it's not great, but it's going to let us away for another couple of days. So we were chatting about how I changed the format of the video to try to reach a wider audience, to try to reach the public. So I started the video with the statement, the biggest lie in the world right now is that cows are killing the planet. So if you were scrolling through TikTok, you would stop and hear that sentence and I've got your attention. The next thing I changed about the format of the video was I moved around where I was recording and that keeps people's attention as well. It essentially breaks the video down into chapters or scenes and people are very reluctant to watch a long monologue. Kind of like this, so I'm kind of defeating my own advice, but we'll forget about that for now. Another key ingredient which made that video a success, in my opinion, was the use of the little tiny graphics. The graphics were used to tell the story of 10 carbon atoms. People are invested in what is going to happen next, so they're very reluctant to leave the video until the end. Also, them little graphics just looked so cool. It was so satisfying seeing them on screen. I can't even describe it, but as soon as I put them on screen, as soon as I arranged them like I did, I knew the video was gonna do well. And the final key ingredient, which made that video do well, and meant that it got pushed to over a million people by the algorithms, was that people engaged in the comment section. 
I think a lot of people just dived into the comments to see if what I was saying was absolute nonsense, if everyone was saying, this is so untrue, this guy's a moron, or if people actually supported my argument, if people validated my argument, and if people who tried to challenge it were being shut down in the comment section. And what really drives engagement on social media is time spent on a video. So if someone watches my video, for the full two minutes and then spends a further three or four or five minutes in my comment section reading people's replies and responses and maybe even leaves a comment themselves the video is pushed to even more people combine that with the amount of likes that video got because people want to support that message especially farmers and people were sharing it and favoring it to add on top of that it is no wonder that video got pushed so hard by the algorithm, but I'm trying to get across that all of the essential ingredients can be quantified and can be known. The difficult part and the part which involves a little bit of chance is getting the ingredients right, getting the mix right. It definitely does not always work. I get it wrong lots of times, but when you get it right, my goodness, can you make a difference? So as I've said already, my goal I set out at the end of last week's video was to try to reach the public with my message, not just farmers. And I have somehow fluked it so that a few days after saying that, I managed it better than I ever had before. And I'm not saying I'm going to repeat that. I might, that might be me peaked. That might be the peak of me reaching the public with a message. But I really hope not because this is a message which farmers can stand on and can fight our battle on and we cannot afford to lose this battle. So the final part of this video I want to address a few critical comments and give you my defence and they are very very much in the minority. I currently have 1368 comments on my TikTok video that I posted on my own profile and there has been a few negative comments but when I have asked them for evidence or proof that what I'm saying is wrong, not a single one has replied to me. Not even one. Right, on to the whole point of this video, which is to address a few of the critical comments. Now to be clear, there is very, very few people who are disagreeing with what I've said. I get so few negative comments on my videos and I don't understand it, but please, I don't encourage it, so thank you. For so few negative comments it genuinely would be a much worse experience if my comment section was filled with people saying i'm doing a terrible job but there is a few and there was actually only one or two on my own account there's currently 1368 comments on the video maybe 10 were trying to say that i was misleading people um, but on twitter on other people's posts where they have shared my video there has been a lot more negative comments so i'm going to pick one or two i'll put them on screen and i'll give you my response to end this video okay we have a guy on twitter called john on climate clearly not an unbiased opinion and he says two huge gaps in this flawed analysis so i'll put his comment over here so you can read it and i'll address his two points point number one he raises the methane released causes 100 times. I said in my video, 96, he's saying 100, we'll say we're the same. The methane released causes 100 times the warming of CO2 for 12 years, correct. He is telling the truth before it breaks down. Huge difference. <laughs> How are people so dumb? Oh, right, okay, let's go through this once again. Methane does cause 100 times the warming of CO2. Methane does survive in the atmosphere for 12 years. However, if the rate my farm is emitting methane is constant, so the animal numbers stay the same, as my cows emit a methane, as my cows emit methane today, the methane my cows emitted 12 years ago has broken down to CO2 again. The amount of atmospheric methane that can be attributed to my cows remains the same. 
have I made that clear? That is literally the entire point of the video. John's second point is even stupider than his first point. CO2 absorbing forests are increasingly being cleared for grazing land for more and more cows. Now, I do not doubt that that is happening somewhere in the world. But we are talking about UK and Ireland farms. Farms in Northern Ireland, we are talking about my farm. My farm is not deforesting land to graze cows. So what is the relevance of this to the argument I made in the video about how my methane is calculated? This is what you call a classic deflection where he wants to put the attention somewhere else because he knows he has lost the argument. Right, let me find another negative comment. There is tons of positive comments. Um, let me see. <laughs> That's pretty good. I'll post that, I'll screenshot that and put it on the side. Imagine the amount of propaganda it took to make people believe cows are the problem. That is actually genuinely true. The mainstream media is literally just propaganda. Here's someone who has tagged Rishi Sunak and Greta Thunberg in my video. Uh, any response, he says. Let's see if they responded. I can confirm they did not respond yet. Okay, we have another genius in the comment section. This time it is Pale Herminini. Let me screenshot it. But you're turning CO2 into methane, correct. Which is worse, correct. Yes, it breaks down into water and CO2, correct. But you keep producing it. What does it matter if it's there 12 minutes or 12 years? It's there, constantly. Look, I will never give up eating meat, but this seems false. Okay, that's a better comment than John, okay? I get that you're confused a little bit, and it can be confusing, okay? But the amount of methane up there is constant, right? So it has a constant amount of warming, okay? Net zero is not to roll back warming and cool the planet. Net zero in 2050 is to stop an increase in global warming. So our goal is to cap the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and stop them increasing. So if the amount of methane from my cows has already stopped increasing, then I have already reached net zero increase in global warming potential. It is not about rolling back on global warming. Does that make sense? We can't put the carbon released from oil and gas back into the ground again anytime soon. I right, will do one more. The fat controller says superb share far and wide. Okay I will finish with the most condescending comment I could find. Richard Tice, the man who is leading the Reform UK party, reposted my video as well. It has got 230,000 views on his Twitter account and the top comment is from a man named Matthew Stadlin. He says, Richard, you're the leader of a party that is riding high on 8% in the polls in the UK and you're adopting science of a farmer on TikTok. <laughs> Over the consensus amongst climate scientists around the world. Now, Matthew, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but every climate scientist will tell you that what I said is true. In fact, in the latest IPCC report, which came out two years ago, they acknowledged that the way they treat biomethane is a gross overestimation of the real global warming potential. So Matthew has a second comment. He says, I'm no scientist, go figure. We figured that out from your first comment, Matthew. But this chap seems to be missing a rather important point. Oh, am I? Well, I'm looking forward to reading the rest of this comment. Assuming his science is correct about how and in what ways the carbon is broken down and emitted by the cow, the methane is released is, let me try again. And in what ways the carbon is broken down and emitted by the cow the methane it releases 
is, as he says himself, far more damaging to the planet than the CO2 it digests. So Matthew's point is the same as our previous comment, except it's worded like a six-year-old wrote it. It doesn't matter how many times more global warming potential methane has than CO2 if the amount in the atmosphere is stable. Because net zero is not about rolling back how much global warming gases are in the air, it's about capping the amount. Does that make sense? No one is suggesting that all historical emissions are put back in the ground. Anyway, I have another little story here. I'll do the conclusion to this video after that. Okay, so that's gonna do us for this video this week. Hopefully you enjoyed that little bit of a sort of behind the scenes look at social media. And I hope you enjoyed calling out some nonsense comments. I really feel like I want to do that more. <laughs> but I don't wanna be mean to people, but people who write stupid comments like that deserve to be called out, let's be honest. But thank you all for watching. And if you enjoyed this type of video, if you enjoyed sort of finding out behind the scenes of social media, if you'd like a more in-depth look at social media, stick it down in the comments section. Subscribe if you really enjoyed it. And for any Deal Farm members out there, so that's the company that I supply with milk, I know a lot of you watch me here on YouTube, please use your vote wisely. There is currently two ongoing elections for the Deal Farm board. And all I'm gonna say is use your vote wisely. And please actually use your vote. Every single vote will matter. For those of you who don't understand the reference to that, just ignore it and thank you for watching.